and welcome to the wizard step five for job planning for health medics. Um, this step usually concerns the uh, routine work, but don't worry if the step isn't referring to step five and maybe it's referring to step four. That's absolutely fine anyway. What we're going to concentrate on is the routine work section here. As before, I'm in as Mr. Andrew Corbett and I'm going to review what is already or the content that is already in my job plan. What I'm also going to do is maybe remove one of these um, activities um, just so I can show you um, how it how it's affected or how it changes depending on uh, what we're adding. So here I'm going to um, I'm doing a med school um, all uh, day. So we've got weeks one and two. So I've got a two week cycle. And I'm doing that from eight in the morning till one in the evening. Um, but I'm also only doing um, that for the morning section. So I'm going to actually edit that and say, well, actually, no, I do med school all day now on a Monday. So um, editing the times is dead simple. So if I'm wanting to change that eight till six, maybe, all I need to do is change those times. It's still part of my core job plan, so still part of my core activities that I'm delivering. Um, anything that you've agreed to do on a temporary basis uh, may be considered as an APA. So just clarify that with your line manager if, if you do have um, instances or activities that are associated with a limited time period that you're providing them. Um, and if it is something that you're not receiving um, payment for from the uh, trust, then you can alternatively reflect the time in your job plan, not obviously a PA payment, but reflect the time in your job plan by adding this as ATC or additional to contract. Again, if you're wanting explanations on what these acronyms are or what HOSS activity is, then you just need to hover over the text itself. It gives you some nice little um, hints and tips as you're doing that. So if we save that, and continue and go back up to the Monday what we can see here is that we are still doing this 29 times a year and um, but we said we're actually doing it for both weeks weeks one and weeks two so why you might ask am I only doing that 29 times a year now the answer to that is in these other two activities that you're also doing within that period of time. And these are called hot activities. We've got the little labels here at the sides. Um, and hot activities are activities that are prospectively covered. So you might have a consultant of the week um, arrangement within your department. It's quite a common, um, common occurrence. Um, and that is occurring um, on an eight weekly cycle in this instance. So if I just log into one of these or maybe even um, delete the um, trauma week entirely and what we can do is we can add it back in and it will just demonstrate what it does to the medical school um, item that we've added in there anyway. So I'm going to delete it. Okay, so we can see here that by deleting that activity, it's automatically assumed that I'm going to be performing my medical school activity more times within the year because I am not working hot activity at that time or half of the hot activity at that time. So to re-add that, I'd simply go to Monday, add a DCC activity that the hot activities are normally um, attributed to your um, direct clinical care activities, although you can have non-working time hot. So if I was to add that back in, so trauma week, including prospective cover, we know that this is a hot one, even if it isn't in the activity that it's hot or prospectively covered, even if it wasn't in the title, we'd know it was a hot activity we selected because this little yellow box comes up here. Um, you can change the location of the activity because you might be working multiple site hot activities. It really depends on your speciality and, and the arrangements within your uh, local organisation. 
you can also link travel time to this. So is there a specific travel time that it's going to take you X amount of time to get from one place to the next? I'm not going to say so here. Um, if you selected yes, then it would be asking you where, where you're going from, where you're going to, and whether there is a subsequent forward destination after that. So I'm going to put the start time back in at a nine o'clock start until six o'clock. I'm not going to relate any um, time to the activity. I'm just going to put it down as it is timetabled. Now, we've got a timetable um, cycle of two for our routine work, but we know that this is not routine work. So de determining the cycle length, actually, you need to consider if this is a prospectively covered activity, how many doctors do it and on what frequency do I do it? I'm going to add this one back in as eight, um, but it could be a completely different hot activity cycle. You can have multiple ones on there. And I'm going to say that I do this activity in week seven. So out of all my colleagues, I'm number seven within that particular cycle. If I'm not doing my hot activity on week seven, I would have to swap it with somebody else, but still work the same number of those activities within a 52 week period. I'm going to leave it as part of my core activities. And I am also going to link it to an objective. OK, and if I scroll down here and click add, I get a little warning sign about being over PA restrictions. And scroll back up and we can see here that the number of times that I'm delivering my normal routine work again has shrunk because I've added in another activity that actually happens one in eight over 52 weeks rather than one in two or both weeks over 42 weeks. So you can still only provide 42 weeks in attendance. That's what these numbers will add up to. Um, but it does recognize that you will be doing any, any activity that is prospectively covered, you'll be doing it more frequently. Um, you can add hot activities um, as well as non-working time Non-working time literally associates um, an activity uh, or a certain amount of um, compensatory rest to potentially very intense hot activities or hot weeks um, so, or even including um, shift work or nighttime work. So you might have the following Tuesday off. So to recognize that in your job plan, it will still need to automatically shrink your um, other activities and to do that you'd have to enter a non-working time hot so if I was to in here put that I on a Tuesday get a compensatory day off for doing two hot Mondays then I would go to our non-working section here non-working time hot and put in the associated time with that so I might actually do 9 till 5 or 9 till 6. I'll leave it at 6. Um, weekly timetabled. Again, this is prospectively covered. So however, however many times your hot activity is happening would normally indicate and be the same with regards to however many times your non-working time hot activities are happening. And I'm going to su suggest that every time I'm hot on a Monday, I'm actually not going to work a Tuesday. I'm going to add that in here. OK. And what it's done on that Tuesday is added another non-working time hot and shrunk all of the other activities to fit that in there. So we're not artificially inflating any of our clinical expectations here. If you're wanting to add something that is a little bit difficult to fit in with your uh, week one, week two expectations, then what you might need to do is actually add a no specified day activity. And we've got plenty here anyway to go at, so we can review some of these. So this ED 
um, activity here, for instance, if I just click into modify, we can have a look on the left hand side what that is actually telling us about this ED or external duties activity. So we know that it is ED other and it says please specify. So the expectation here would be that you have added commentary against it. Um, we're actually looking at the duration, not when this happens. A lot of the time it's very, very difficult to know where that quarterly meeting is going to happen or whether it is going to happen in addition to your already timetable plans or whether it replaces any activity in there. Um, so if we put in the duration of, of the expectation of that activity, we can see here that we've got an additional way of saying, you know, how we expect that to work um, on the timetable in question. So if the activity is already in addition to work, uh, already in the timetable, then and we need a PA payment for it, then we would click this button here. If it runs concurrently, and this is usually where I get not lots of questions about how can I do two things at the same time. Well, if you think about it, when you are doing ward rounds, and if you have trainees who follow you around on your ward rounds, you are doing two things at the same time. Um, so if you're wanting to identify those training opportunities in your job plan as well for your junior doctors, then you can put the runs concurrently with work already timetable in the job plan. It does mean you get paid for it once, um, but it actually highlights that there is two activities going on there. Um, or replaces work already in timetabled in the job plan. So if it, you don't know when it's going to happen, just when it happens, this takes precedence over your timetable, then that would be the option that you would need to select. Um, we can on here we can if we click save now because we've said that this happens um, and some other work gets cancelled we can see here that we've got these little brackets these little brackets indicate that it's not double counting that activity so this is what that activity is worth if we hadn't already timetabled time elsewhere um, this activity, for instance, the appraisal, so we don't know when it's going to happen. So if you're an appraiser and you get a certain payment for that, but you just don't know where you're going to fit it in, you just fit it and when you can fit it in. Um, and it's something that you do on top of your clinical and uh, normal SPA activity. Then it's not in brackets, it's outside of the brackets. If you're ever stuck as to what these little labels mean at the side, these little acronyms, hovering over them will give you what they mean. But there's also, at the very bottom of the page, a summary, quite a handy summary here. And it will also give you what the content is of your um, on-call, again, at a later point. So, again, if you're wanting to let your um, manager know what changes you've made or if there is a specific... Um, change that you want to highlight with them, you can enter the text here, click save and continue to go on to the next phase or save and exit to um, come back to this at a later point. Right, thanks for listening.